Hmm. Oh god, what is Coastline play? No, it is not go back to Coastline, okay? It when are we going back to Favela? We've never... Actually, it wasn't... That's not true. You've played a pro match on Favela. I have? Are you sure? I don't think... I have. Were you not active in... No, I played back then, but I didn't play a map on... We didn't have a scrimmed it either. I don't think we actually played in Pro League. Really? I know NA did, like, Serenity's team. Um, Len, no. I think Kix's team played on Favela at one point. I, I think so. I think NA video. liked it more than EU did. I know that much. Can't say. Operator bands are rolling in Ying. Taken out first by Bleed. Monty will join next. <laughs> I like the Monty ban a lot. Yeah, but we need to look at who banned it, right? CAG have been the mm -hmm. team to ban it almost every single game so far, which is so unlike them if you look at their last couple of events. But again, sometimes Monty that you think goes well when you play it is actually an issue for you. And also, we saw Bleed in the first matchup against CAG on Consulate. It was Bleed who played the better Monty and actually won a couple of rounds on the attack inside. But with this being Border, it's not a common Monty map, I would say. So it's still a bit of a surprise here. Whereas the Ying, the Asami, the Valkyrie, much more common stuff for a map like Border, the Intel, the Asami to hold security. And of course, Ying has become this operator that on every single map, by pretty much every single team, is either banned or if not banned, played in the majority of the rounds on the attack inside. So no big surprises there. It's going to be lead on defense, Cyclops on attack, and... Uh, Nothing really too out of the ordinary here to start things off. My eyes, personally, I'm going to be looking at Reaps. Obviously a big name on his Attack team. He's had a, honestly, average performance so far in this tournament. Haven't had that super big star, kind of big kill game really so far. But there's still time, of course. And then, Turstam. It's his birthday. Again, we got us it. He just turned 19 today. So happy Ten birthday, Turista. And uh, what better present than to actually go to the second phase of the Major by winning Five here in this best of three. We're just going to say happy birthday every time he comes up, huh? We have to. It's, it's, it's once we a don't. year, Parker. You know, we do. Wow, that's crazy. Isn't it? If you, wouldn't you want us to wish you and, and the fans wish you a happy birthday when your birthday? You would. I suppose that could be yes, nice. Yes, exactly. Early Lion right now. As very first round, we'll start upstairs on Armory. Just a bit of joking going on between Cyclops and Bleed with Reaps and Arkley talking to each other about reportedly selling intel. <laughs> Hoven picked off early by Black Ray, who's already made his presence known. The top of East, that's very so quick, quick pace and not really dealing with the Solus too much. He just punishes him and moves on. I mean, this looks like the same CAG as yesterday, where they want to get in the building quick on border and choke up their opponent on those first initial footholds, like East Stairs, Security, Break Room, etc. But then the big difference from CAG now, than just like six months ago, is that when they get this early advantage, they slow things down. They don't overextend and overexpose themselves and die shortly after. They maintain the lead and utilize it to build a bigger one throughout the entirety of the round. And that's why we see Black Ray, when he got that kill, he peeled back, hopped on cams, shot him on air jab, and he's waiting for his teammates to get back into that support position. That's where they are now. The half round to go, they're looking at 90, they're looking at office, but Bleed, they want to swing back as well. Just explosions going off all over. It's, there goes some of the wall, there goes some castle barricades. Some of the things Ooh. that were designed to keep you safe are gone, one of which the floor underneath Mentalist becomes lava. Darkly shoots up the nade and Black Ray is good enough for a second kill. Repositions in his chair. Has an act of confidence and he's got the Warden of Turnsta also located. Arkley, the first death. Zasfi under 90, gets that one. Back over into security, looking towards break room. Turnsta's does in archives right now. The only person on the bomb site. Cyclops, all stacked up on top east. Yeah. Nowhere close to an armory take, but armory is as free for the taking as possible. And again, CAG, they're playing just disciplined. They're waiting, they're waiting for Anderson's drone to come up from outside the building, in towards it, get intel, and say, guys, three, two, one, lion scan, push into office, and try and get that fight together, 2v1. Numbers are continuing to go down for Cyclops after losing a second player. Asfi is on flank. Gets spotted, though, by Anaton. The birthday boy himself. And a 1v3. Smart glass is on. Not flashed whatsoever. No follow-up immediately from Cyclops. Another flash will go out. Turds does immune at this point, but drone, they know he's in the corner. It's like a trapped animal at this point. He's gonna have to fight his way out and they just stack up from Cyclops. Far too much for him to handle. 
CAG take the first round. And this is a scary thing. You see how CG they played border yesterday. You saw the 171 against Talon. You pick it today, but the downside is when you pick the map, the opponent chooses the starting side. And we all know, or should know at least, that on border you don't you don't want to be on defense. You want to be on the attack. You have so much control because the map, well, it's relatively small on border. There are so many easy ways in throughout the building and so many long Attacker lines of set that favors those scoped in weapons that attack us more of than defense. And that's why we see most attacking teams, they're going to care about East stairs, they're going to care about security and break room, and they just work from there. Because those three areas off the map, that south portion, they will give you avenues to every single bomb site. Customs, armory, ventilation, Telus archives, it's all kind of working off those three starting positions. And we saw Talon, the reason why they lost so badly against Cyclops, they didn't really play for those important areas. So, CAG showing us that they could do border yesterday, they could do border today as well, and it's really up to Bleed to counter here, either from studying pre the game from yesterday, or just saying, okay, what is it that Bleed can find remaining. out throughout in the middle of these rounds, what the weaknesses are from CNG's attack right now. Attack That's the thing, located. Valkyries banned out. You have very little intel on the defensive side to make those decisive decisions as to what could the weaknesses be. Are the flanks open? Well, they simply just do not know. I'm not ready to go. F not known as the Dreadline, to many. Got obscuring device thrown out by Fenrir that will stop you from having the ability to see more than a couple feet in front of your face. Wasn't really much of, uh, I guess you could say, an influence on the previous no. round, Nick. Not at all. However, <laughs> smokes and glass, smokes and Osa, and I want to go. Yeah. Finca, Osa, I glass. like this. I love Japanese Rainbow Six. Yep, I mean, Cyclops. how many glasses have we seen at this point? Just a couple. There were some in the G2 DZ game. There was one in the G2 game, game yeah. yeah. There's Alamal. He didn't really get very far with it, but uh, they, they tried. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's Oregon. It's a bit more uh, of a closed off map, I would say, where a border, because there are all these like, long lines of sight, glass that we can see through the smoke, can get a ton of value. And if you play two sets of smoke, like with the Osa Aniton, you can really enable C2C here. They're already using those smokes. Now Aniton is in, but he'll be nearsighted. Worried about an impact or a nitro cell. Shooting away to try and gain some way of fighting back. And I like how quickly Bleed fell off. He took the vertical play. Okay. Excuse me. Arkley with the only kill so far for Cyclops. The team's trade out. Advantage goes in favor of Bleed as Cyclops assert themselves at the top of metal. Now it's Black Ray with his fourth kill. Equalize. <laughs> Finding one of those dread mines. Talked about the Fenrir not being particularly valuable so far. It's been paying off huge in this round. I mean, Blackware is so good right now. Just finding kill of a kill. But the question is, and it's in with two OC shields in pocket, two smoke shields to enable Su Su C. They could easily go for a plant here, but they're still rotating around the map on the security and main stair side of things. So it's awkward now. And it's in with case on one side of the map with no backup and the last two members on the opposite security main stairs. Valkyrie has an idea. It's also a bulletproof camera that he could have shot out quite a while ago. Suzu sees the warden. They weren't expecting this. It's Hoven in a 1v3. And it's a nowhere to be found still with the case. A mystery as to where he will emerge from. Hoven knows there's one on metal detector, but you do not want to engage with that glass well, as the other two players come in through fountain side. Hoven playing by metal. He'll lose line of sight towards fountain, taking the engagement with the glass. This is good. Now back towards Fountain, he'll go. But for a brief moment, he'll be flashed. Anathan getting Diffuser down. <laughs> Hoven gets spotted by Black Ray. That's six kills and zero deaths for Black Ray. A great start for him, a great start for CAG, and they're up 2 nothing. And I like the fact that Black Ray, he was playing the Amaru, but he didn't feel like he had to utilize the gadget because he was not really flying in the window, flying up the hatches. He took security control by pushing up the long hallway from office, and then he just sat in there, found three picks, played around his team for the rotations, and I like that. Because I feel like some players, they'll play a particular operator like the Blitz or like the Amaro and feel like they need to go for a rush play because that's typically Defenders what you want from that kind of operator. But sometimes you can just play the gun. Sure, you have your gadget and theoretically you should pick an operator for the gadgetry usage, but you don't always really ne necessarily need to do that. And I think that round in particular is where Black Ray just using the gun, having it up, waiting for his team, not feeling like he has to be the playmaker himself, was the right play for him. 6-0 now, as you mentioned. 
He's done a phenomenal job in the first two rounds, getting entries and then being very stable for his team, never over committing to a too aggressive of a play where he might find himself dying. And he's just, again, attacker. waiting for Ten intel. Cyclops definitely in the driver's seat. Lee did go back to back on Armory, but now things will change up to go in that bathroom teller's bomb set instead where now it's about the verticality. You're going to extend upstairs, play in office, play Armory, play Archives, etc. And they also have some intel below, a pulse, turst that with a C4 in pocket. And Cyclops, not saying they're not going to respect it, but there's no IQ available for them. They don't have any counter intel for the pulse, and that could be troublesome for them later on if they don't clear downstairs first. Turrets will hopefully gain some significant value with that pulse that you just discussed. A Bravo on the board means that we need to talk about the gadgets that can easily be controlled by the Kludge Drone. One is those proximity alarms that Reaps brings as a secondary gadget, while my discs can also be taken. Foolproof camera by Aspie, including those dread mines. Can't take the frost mats, can't take the shield, can't take the castle barricades, can't take pulse, unfortunately. <laughs> unfortunately, yeah. Imagine if you could just control all of those. Yoink, mine now. Yoink. I mean, if you ever make like an oh, Ooh. that's interesting. C4 spot. It's like on the break room side in the soft wall. Turdster was reading him. That's why. Yeah. You could hear the pulse scanner, and then it was the pulse who tossed it up. Proximity alarm giving Black Ray's position away. He needs to be very careful about how he engages over towards east. More information, and he's just looking the wrong way. Reaps with the entry kill. It's the first death for Black Ray. And that one there was indeed an overextension, but they thought East Steps was clear. Default cam wasn't even shut, they had no real intel. Chibisu could have followed for a trade maybe, but chose not to. Playing on that finger, maybe trying to play, play a bit more conservative with the grenades and pockets still, and two more finger charges to go. Don't want to die early in the round as finger in that kind of position. But it's really slowed CHGs down here in their advance. Kind of locked out of what they want to achieve, because remember, it's a downstairs bombs on bathroom tellers, and they're dying upstairs. Mercury now next in line. He finds oh. the castle, a mentalist. After Reeves had died earlier, that's a press para doing some mighty good damage. Oh, and no. there's another no! And he gets frog splashed by Asfi. Could have been a very easy pick for Arcoli. Instead, they have at least a read as to where this is. Hoven giving his position away as well upstairs in office, but the disappearing act through the hatch back towards the bomb site. A full reload, ready to engage what comes next. 30 seconds remain, and Cyclops having an advantage of one. Time for Asfi to move around which of those dread mines are open. Like that CAG are still on drone. As they look to open things up and go for the drop, they have to be very wary. The fact that somebody could be playing down there additionally. Frost left. mats are the big question mark for me. Suzu will drop, just barely evading in as down goes Hoven. Aspie could stop this in its tracks, but Anaton is coverage from the window. CAG is up 3-0 in this match. And again, such a good understanding of what CAG they need in that position. They have three members on the office hatch, all seemingly looking to drop. But no, it's about using their utility, the grenades, the flashbangs, opening up the window from the hatch, and then Anaton rotating from outside balcony down towards the bomb side's window, saying, I'm going to cover the window towards the hallway, and the last guy either stay in the hatch or drop and cover the planter. And they really just have a checklist saying, okay, we need ABC. Let's make sure that we have ABC before we get going. And that right there is exactly the biggest weakness of CAG in the last two and a half years in international grounds. They didn't do that before. And they would lose these kinds of rounds that they should be winning. But now, it's a flawless 3 for them so far. And it's forced Lee to take their technical timeout already here in map number one. And look at the scoreboard. It's not all that great individually for Bleed either. Every single member on one single or kill, with the exception of Asfi, who has three, that's not a whole lot. Black Ray, as an individual, has the same amount of kills, basically, with the assist as the entire team of Bleed so far. It's a, it's a tough start. Well, yeah, I mean, this isn't really the result that you want, especially given that this is Bleed's map. Yeah. This is exactly what happened against Talon in yesterday's match with CAG, if you recall. Yeah. For those that didn't follow along, CAG got blown out by Bleed in the very first match on the stream, 7-3 in favor of Bleed. CAG did not look like themselves. They come up against Talon, the Korean team that was competing and fighting for their lives. And on Talon's map of Bay, CAG wins 7-3. CAG then goes to Border and wins 
7-1. CAG did start on defense in that matchup. And they went 5-0 and through the first five rounds on border defense. Suggesting that while yes, Talon might not have been the most practiced team on this map and winning only a single round on border would suggest that. Yeah. That CAG are quite comfortable on defense. The fact that they've already got three rounds on attack bodes very well for what happens when the side swap comes in. Oh, it does. And uh, I think confidence for a team like CAG and even for Bleed as well, very important because these are... I want to say at least experience because Cyclops, they have made up international grounds, but for Bleed, they are a new international team. You want to get some rounds in the board, get some, you know, momentum, so to speak, going, get those creative juices flowing, saying, guys, go for this swing, hey, let's make a play over here, etc. Because when you're starting on defense, you don't have to problem solve the same way as you do an attack, so Bleed, this could just end up being a warm-up game for them in the best of three. You know, the first map gets uh, surrendered, unfortunately, and it starts showing up on the server. But the benefit of best of three is you can lose the first map and still be A-OK -okay for the last two. But of course, try and stop CAG, slow them down, have some confidence-inspiring rounds would be the goal here to bleed. Church, they're gonna find that drone, reinforce the wall, cut off the rotation. It's again a vertical hold because the bottom side is downstairs in ventilation workshop instead. And I do like this verticality setup because it forces CAG to deal with the top floor hold and the primary hold as well. You can play more around the map. But Bleed, they keep falling single-handedly, not having those trades going their way. They gotta fix that in this round. I mean, how do you diagnose Bleed? How do you diagnose the issues at the moment? I mean, other than Asfi having largely impactless kills, the rest of this team has not accomplished much oh. on the score sheet. It's a rough spot to be in, I mean... The roam has not been particularly strong for Bleed. In fact, I haven't really noticed a ton of roam presence to begin with. And oh. Cyclops have just been so proficient with their entry work. There's Black Ray to get one. Immediately maneuvers over towards the B-bomb site. Flushing Asfi, the only player with more than a single kill on Bleed, out of his position. That, that's just not good enough. No one's on cams. They don't have the f net there. It's all from the, uh, the Fen Rear. They don't have the beep boops from Hoven. Like, there's so many different kind of intel pieces of utility, but they're not being used to position correctly around the map here, and therefore they're again playing 4 versus 5 from bleed side. More information this time, as the mirror is spotted out, concealed by smoke and a joint effort to push Mentalist out of that position will be needed. Ven's workshop is the bomb site, but the silhouettes will not fool you. Every single player from bleed is upstairs. Nobody is on the bomb site itself. I imagine that they have a vantage point down below and probably some form of information, Ooh. but you could potentially take advantage of this. That's exactly what Suzu's doing as Reaps dies, and now it's Arkali to try and keep their attention. That's a successful exactly defuse plan for Suzu. Turns to drops. It could just be a flawless round. Hovind's the only one left. Firing away, getting a kill onto Arkali, but how many more can you add up? That's only Hovind's second kill. No, Suzu doing all the work himself, four in a row from CAG. Damn, this is not the result that I expected so far. I mean, going back to the first re uh, the matchup here between Bleed and CAG and Consulate, I was praising Bleed for their discipline, for setting up the crossfires, always playing trades on defense, etc., and having a good read in the game strategically. And I have not seen that from them on border. And then normally you'd go, okay, this is CAG's map pick, it's fine, you know, they're supposed to lose this one if you're Bleed, but, but that's bomb. not the case. Bleed picked this map against CAG, and they're down 0-4, and we, they haven't shown us anything where they go, wow, great attempt, ah, oh, close round, you know, ah, CAG just clutched it, they got, you know, good timings or whatever, no. This is CAG storming into the building, Black Ray in particular, with a drone in front of him, just finding opening kill after opening kill, and Blade, they don't really seem to be adapting right now. The only adaptation in Operators has been that Sol is not being picked pretty much every single round. And yeah, you can tell them where the drones are coming from, but that doesn't seem to be go. the case. The Fenrir, or Asfi, inside of Customs, was looking at the floor, like, oh, there's a drone here, I'm gonna shoot it, and they get shot by Black Ray from behind shortly after. So, I don't think Solus is doing the best work right here, no matter who's playing that operator. And I don't think they're putting their utilities in the right areas either to deny the entries from CAG, and it's why they keep finding those opening kills uncontested. Bleed only drew first blood in round number three. Outside of that, it's been either a trade or Cyclops all the way. It leads more credence to what you just said. The usual killers on Bleed have been very quiet. Open, Reeves, yeah. pretty much invisible all of them, right? It's uh, not even just individually, but 
sure is let's say one player keeps dying, fair enough. But let's say that you keep dying and no one's trading you. So you just die kind of for nothing, you die alone. That's the bigger issue at hand here. Because if Mentalist goes 1 and 4, but somebody else gets the kill trade every single time, then you can say, okay, 1 for 1 trade is neutral, it's equal. But there's just people falling by the wayside with no backup. And it's CAG who always have more guns facing the enemy's direction than not. Like this coordination over towards break area, and Black Ram might have just seen a player hard to tell from that position. Opening up the castle barricade to give a longer line of sight with the DMR that will flatten you in a matter of seconds. Oh. Black Ray only surviving because of the adrenal surge. Very well timed. Chibi Su dies. There's bleed to get on the board first. Still over half the round to go. That's the last adrenal surge that they will have as its effects oh, continue to linger. Arcoli walking in. Once again, that suppressed para is so lethal. Mentalist feels its wrath that time. Now next in line is the Solus, winning the duel is Hoven. Down goes Arkali, the advantage for Bleed, and with Black Ray so low, this is the best look that Bleed has had all game. Now it's Anatin's turn to take some damage, as he fights at the top of East Stairs. It's basically for sure so far. And this is again, finally Bleed actually punishing the injuries, finding the opening kill, and then playing solidified in these corners, the right way to play border. Let them come to you, you got the crossfires, you got the strong positions. Suzu's gone, so the last two are limping. Playing on borrowed time. Black Ray sees one, looking to pad his stats. Shot through the soft wall. Anaton now nearsighted, feared as he walks away. A 1v4 at this point. Virtually unwinnable. As the diffuser has one smoke. It's a pick on the Aspy, vaulting on in, but Reaps is there. Long range in that same position over by break room that he spent most of the round in. And Bleed finally gets on the board. Yep, a well-needed round for them, but they got this final defense up and coming, and what bumps it do they go to? Because when you've gone through every single one, but <laughs> but customs where you don't really ever want to go to, and you've lost every single time, it's okay. Um, I guess we gamble either ventilation, a bathroom, and hope for the best. And then, I, I love this, like, attack or is still in play, but we see a Blitz and a Glass being showed here from CAG. They might want to change up the pace right now. They've been playing this kind of methodical, semi-predictable style of siege that worked really well for them. It's how they got the four rounds, only lost a single or one. But now Bleed are expecting this same kind of pace, the same kind of speed to be repeated in these rounds. And then all of a sudden you see CAG, Lion, Blitz, Glass. That's not gonna be a methodical slow push where they care about getting map control and entries. That could very well be a direct sight rush execute that'll be over in 20 seconds if the bomb goes down favoring the attack. Or if they can shut down that plant attempt, then lead in an excellent position. Now, Turkstar is playing Lesion. Those goo mines could gain them some incredible value here depending on where they are placed on the map. Same thing with Hover on Solace. If you can Attackers see where the plan is going down, shut it down or call out at least, Attackers that could be a way into this round. But there is not a single C4 on the both the defenders. There's no smokes as either. So besides gunplay, you don't have any options in. We also have an A stream. <laughs> in case you guys couldn't hear it. Very exciting stuff happening. And now around here as well, Sunni will follow as well. Blackbird with Diffuser as at the bottom side. Chibi Sun Armor nearby. Not sure it's gonna be a direct side rush though. The glass is gone, but Blitz is still there. We could set it up. And it's just rotating over. Four members now on the office side. That could be the sign. Question is though, with just the Blitz on the board and no Ying or Glass to follow up, I'm curious to what the actual execute would look like here with Cyclops. Oh my. Okay. Chibi Sue, what's gonna happen? Smokes to go in, and suddenly Anaton's in the midst of the bomb site, and in the midst of the smoke, he doesn't have access to it. Suzu is getting the diffuser down. Arkley dies to Reaps. Reaps is still there. Suzu gets it down, and Anaton is next one in line. Black Ray one kill, but Mentalist gets both. Suddenly, nobody's watching that diffuser. Chibisu and Black Ray need to get in a position. An endless clown car of players can hop out of that window. Chibisu holding from above. Black Ray. Not too far removed, trying to get baited into this by the wall. Oh a nice shot by Reaps, who now hops onto it, and that's a clean sweep. Bleed plays that one perfectly in the post plant. 
And they pick up their second round to close out the first half. That is not how that round was supposed to go. Both the Hibana and the Blitz didn't seem to find, be able to find the window to jump back out after plump, the bomb went down because they were stuck inside their own smoke grenade. No one's repelling upside down the window for the post plant. Chibisu Niaro actually got in top floor but doesn't have any eyes on Diffuser, doesn't have a great post plant position, and more importantly, the last two attackers from Cyclops don't have any way to help one another as one is deep inside the building above the side Attack and one is the outside the bomb set bomb. window with no lines aside to one another. And Bleed, they get that important final defense round. They get a 2-4 half, which is the wrong side to be on, but they buy themselves enough wiggle room now as CAG are not going to be that close to match point. They can now play on the attacking side, they can make a couple mistakes and adaptations and still have a great shot of winning this first map. And this is an attacker side of, or attacker favorite board, I would say, more often than not. So we should be expecting Bleed to find more success in general on this side swap. The big question is, what kind of style will they bring to do that kind of job? We saw CAG go for it mostly methodical rounds, but they did try that last final rush. Bleed in the very first round, they will kind of do what CAG did once. They'll play the Osa and the Glass combined with the Finger Lion. One thing here is, there is no actual hard bridge on the attack inside, so you are limiting yourself on what kind of execute to go for. Normally, this would indicate that you're forced into an archive attack. You don't necessarily need to breach any walls. With an armory, you do need to breach that exterior wall to get access to the bomb site itself. If yesterday's results against Talon are any indication, then Cyclops should be relatively strong on defense. I know I referenced them earlier, but for those that are just tuning in or maybe weren't listening at the time, does that bearing nine look abnormally large, by the way? <laughs> 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 it does look abnormally large, actually. Why does it look so big? It's in half the screen. Diffuser. That is humongous. All right, well, either way, uh, Cyclops against Talon yesterday went 5-0 and on their first five rounds. And oh. Mendelus is going to walk right in. This is the same thing that confronted them before. First kill goes to Turdsta. Nitro Bomb Cell looked like it was going attacker. to go out. There goes a pocket EMP. It is. And it takes out Mentalist Day in the shield as well. The Gambit. Works off for the first pick. Now somebody else has to get into the action. Anna to dig out Asfi and his own teammate, Suzushi. Oh, Reaps posted up on vents, firing away as Hoban manages to get it down. Nade goes out, kills Chibi Sue. Anna to try and save the round. Can't even find a single kill. Bleed. Get three in a row. <laughs> and that is how you attack Archives with the glass and the Osa. Much quicker. Much more decisive as well, and honestly, it just looked like they had that figured out from the very beginning. They picked those operators without any hesitation. They are prepared for their attacking side. And I also want to say that that's preparation right there. That's how you execute that so cleanly, and Blade looking good while doing so. And that's boner for you. When you bring out operators like the Blitz, like the Glass, the Ying, the Osa, etc., you can pretty much rush every single bomb set if you want to, as long as you got the right read, information, and setup, and they have exactly just that. Now, when you do that in your first attacking round, you are setting the pace and the tone for the entire half to come, and CAG, they have to be aware and a little bit afraid, actually, of a potential side rush on every single bomb set going forward now. So if you're bleed, the best thing you can probably do is don't go for a rush immediately after, because that's pretty much predictable. Now, the exception would be if you have drone on the bomb site, you know it's clear. You can, of course, still go for a rush. But keeping the opponent guessing as to if it's going to be a faster or a slow round Five is always remaining. going to be beneficial. And the reason for that is, if the defenders expect a side rush, they're Attackers not going to be roaming very bomb. far off the map, far away from the bomb site. That Attackers means that if you don't go for the rush, Attackers you can get free map control. Diffuser. Whereas the enemies think that you would never ever dare to rush, they would spread themselves thin and stop the entry, some, the, um, entry players from getting inside the building. Bleed, they got the blitz. They got the glass, they got the armor and the lion. If they want to go fast, they very well could, and they are sitting up for right now, because here they go. Yeah, and it could be another quick one. As out goes the smokes, bleed is a good idea, but turns to his gambit, fails, Aspies does as well. Mentalist next in line to take some damage as he's tucked away. Uh, Vaults on over, and 30 seconds in, it's just Hoven and Reaps left. I understand what you're trying to do, and I do like it from a spectator standpoint, but yeah, not right, seem right. to be as well practiced as it could be. Now a standstill for presumably the final two minutes. Arkley took a lot of damage, but other than that, Cyclops are in fine form, <laughs> still holding control of the bomb site, and most importantly, the diffuser is in the thick of it. Yeah, that's. I mean, this is the. This is like the 50-50 of a rush. Either you win really quickly, or you pretty much lose immediately. 
And it could have, would have, should have worked, but it didn't. And I do want to say, Mentalist jumped in with Blitz, went for the ADS, got near sighted by Fenrir, and then flashed nothing, bolted the rotate, and died. But Hoven does get a kill upstairs. It was a long way to go. Half down to the timer. As you mentioned, Parker, Diffuser on the bomb side. You got to retake that, find a comfortable position, and then make a play off of that. It's a long way forward to bleed here. Reaps could drop as there's some drone work being done by Hoven. I mean, you've got so much time at this point. Drone going out. There's an EU1D as well, paralyzing the defense. You can't tell if he's spotting uh, just where he wants to drop or a potential line of sight. They think there might be somebody over in the corner that's being concealed by a mute jammer. There's Jaeger on the board. And a warden as well, so this smoke could work against him. Drops into the dread mine, but off goes the smoke. Finding it, stopping the nearsightedness. Reeves pulling out the sidearm before juggling on over and mm. losing the duel to Anaton because guess what? The warden can use that smoke as well. An odd engagement as it looked like. Arkley was going to go for that, but it's Anaton to get the very final pick. CAG strike back after letting the round go to bleed previously. In fact, all three previously. And that's the first successful defense for CAG. And that's exactly what I mean when I said that I don't like when teams, they rush too often or too many times in a row because it becomes more predictable. And it, a rush typically works when it's, you're catching opponents by surprise or you're doing a rush that is not very popular or common to see. Because again, surprise factor, that chaos effect. Bomb. We saw CAG having three members near the side when Mentalist jumped in with the Blitz, and that's simply too many enemies to deal with for the Blitz himself. He can only be shield faced into one direction. The Ward was on site, we can see through the smokes, and then a C4 primed ready as well. So there's no realistic way in unless the enemy makes a ton of mistakes, and you don't ever want to rely on the enemy being bad. You should rely on you playing the round clean, playing it well, playing it good. I don't think Bleed really did that in that previous round because they didn't seem to have enough intel as to just how many people were on the site versus on the roam. And now, remaining. with the round not working out, we can probably expect some more normal, methodical, slower-paced gameplay from Bleed because it's time to change things up. You tried the fast stuff, it worked once, it failed once, you're looking at this 3-5 scoreline. The next time Bleed they lose, they're staring down that match point for CAG. It's one of the worst spots to put yourself in. So, your Bleed... Try and get the next round or two, tie things up, and overtime doesn't look all that impossible, all that unlikely. They go on Twitch, the grid lock, Fink is a stable as well. Of course, you want to be able to boost up your teammates and yourself in these gunfights. Fink has those frag grenades now as well, so tons of utility. I will say, I very much appreciate how aggressive Bleed is on these entries. Being able to get in the building? Oh my, but surviving is half of the battle, and... Oven doesn't accomplish that. One adrenal surge had gone out. Our colleague shuts him down on the bottom of East Stairs by Lobby. Now Black Ray's position next. Serious damage with that Uzi. Unable to complete the kill onto Reaps. Down goes Turrets to the Anaton, and now Reaps manages to evade one of those Razor Blooms. He's upstairs on that catwalk. Back towards East he goes. Deployable shield. Hard and soft walls, all of which Ace, he can actually handle quite easily. Now it's Aspie priming a grenade to bounce on in. Unsuccessful in taking any of the players down. A nice swing from Reaps onto Black Ray. Numbers will equalize. Reaps is damaged though, and well, Mentalist gets down, thinks he can go from bad to worse, but Reaps is somehow making this happen. He's losing HP slowly but surely. But he really is the Grim Reaper on this round when it comes to these picks. Ooh. Nade tossed in, Anaton evading it. This has been constant action for about a minute at this point. Anaton pulls trigger a little bit too early. Aspie's able to walk by and survive. It's now some of the wall inside of Archon will go. Anaton can swing onto that. Reaps close by, he oh. gets the kill, but suddenly it's a 1v1. And Suzu versus Aspie in an engagement. Looks like there's a Maestro Cam up watching him. Does Aspie know this? Out he goes to retrieve the diffuser. The Suzu's in a position where he has to get around those track stingers. This is one of the impacts to do it. Aspie 
with the shotgun out, being spam pinged. He knows the Maestro's there. They're working both ways. And now Aspie swings, but Suzu wins it. CAG moves to map point. Oh, both had the intel. They both knew the whereabouts, but they both also couldn't really move from their th locations. One stuck in the corner, the other one stuck knowing that he cannot plant anywhere on the bomb site. So the track stingers, yeah, they're on the ground. They're stopping Suzu from moving anywhere, but he doesn't have to. He's not the playmaker in that scenario. When you're playing defense in a one versus one, is the attacker's task to get down that diffuser. It takes seven seconds when you're back to backs right on the bomb side next to each other. You cannot just sit down for seven seconds. The defender will not allow that to ever go down. And to make things even worse, Susu did have an impact in pocket as well. If you wanted to pop those traps on the ground, destroy the floor, create a confusion or a distraction somewhere as well, do some damage towards his opponent. Now CAG there on match point. They're going to go downstairs, play that vertical attacker. bomb side, and they're going to do this with a ton of different utility. The Maestro Camps, the Mirror Windows, the Race of Bloomson's Thorn, the Castle Barricades, and of course, Arcoli on the solo, so we can see where the planet's going to be going down, if that's going to be the play from Bleed. So far, it does appear that Bleed, they want to play around the objective very heavily. They're going to try and get to that bomb side, try and get down the diffuser as comfortably as possible, and CAG go. so far have done a great job at not allowing that to really happen. They spread themselves out across the bomb side, Attackers fighting security, fighting these stairs, going for flanks, and just saying, you know what? We don't want the bomb set to be a 5 versus 5 fight because we know that you guys on Bleed will win that. We'll just try and take, you know, a 1 for 1 trade, make it 4v4, make it 3v3, because we know that we're stronger in those numbers. <laughs> That's Reeves has time to use her adrenal surge, and well, you gotta go what? for it, but why do you, why do you re-engage? No adrenal surge to get you back up. Finka will need to be retrieved. Black Ray will go fishing for even more with this map on the line, but Asfi stands sentinel. Staring down that window and could have very easily punished Black Ray. Will now open things up. He has no idea as to the whereabouts. Adrenal Surge goes off and Reaps is back up. There's a sound cue that goes with that, so CAG will have heard that. He knows that the thing is back up, but guess what? They want more of it, and finally they get the pick. But not before Aspie's been reduced to virtually no HP as well. Yeah, and the thing is, I really respect Blackbird for playing that disciplined and safe, like not going for the greedy, the kill secure. But then he kind of sticks out for a little bit too long. Sure, Aspie on HP, Reeves on HP, but the finger boosts are coming out, healing his teammates. But that is the last one, though. Reeves and Astri, less than half HP for the remainder of this round, but they got that one man advantage still. I would say worth for Bleed here in this scenario. Blackbird killed so much time. He did. Kills some drones as well. Mm -hmm. But you always Forced out like two adrenal more. surgeons. Yeah. Value wise, but it's like, I feel like they could have been done more. You know, if you get all that stuff done and fall back, you stay alive, you give him more value. It's not all over though. CAG stuff, map control. They got to buff the bomb side on the bomb side, and they still bleed us to pick this apart. I mean, that's not how you win millions if you're only gambling a dollar here and there. Hey, you got to keep going in. That's fair. I just think, I mean, okay, to be fair, you're up 6 3. You can take some risks here. You can go for those risky plays. It's a downstairs bomb site, by the way. So bleed as their work cut out for them. Flush out the top floor and then move towards that Vents workshop site. Uh, it's Suzu taking some damage. Backed up by Arcoli as they know one player's over towards Passport and it's a ring around the Rosie. Advantage for Bleed will continue to go as Arcoli circles around, picking off turd stuff at the rest of Cyclops. Getting punished by the gridlock. It's Aspie and Reaps to get every single kill if I saw in that round. <laughs> Which is amazing because those were the two that Black Ray was trying to nullify earlier on. Bleed's fourth round means that they stay in this, but it's still CAG's map at the moment. It was such a good play from both teams as well. CAG, they went for that two versus one set of customs and they got the kill and the collapse. But while that happened, Bleed, they recognized, hey, nobody's really covering the hatch drops on site. Let's just drop down and get those skills and go for a really off pace play. So while two members, they leave the side to get the single defenders kill in customs, well, Bleed, they take side control. And then defenders, they play retake, and that's never where you want to be. A good read from Bleed, but they're still in this awkward position. Two more rounds in a row needed to go to overtime. Going through their decisions on the attack inside of what operators should they be bringing. Mentalist did hover the bits for a short moment and thought, you know what, guys? Let's not gamble this again because it's exactly where it wronged previously. That Taylor's path and bomb site. Yes, you have a quick X point in towards the side window, but you also have this whole map, this beautiful map you can work with. Go upstairs, roam clear, find some of those picks, build an advantage for yourself, and then pick about the bomb site later on. 
One big thing here, with Valkyrie being banned, defenders don't have a lot of intel to be had that is movable. Valkyrie cameras, while they cannot move them around, you get three of them. They cover so much area, but, and it's on the Echo, can change this. Because those yokais, they can hover around. Relocate them, gain into top floor, first floor, Pantana, etc. And this also just speaks to the read here from CAG. They're expecting a roam clear. They are not, but at the same time, actually, they have one Yoga for the roam clear, one for the side rush. They're preparing for both cases. And you'll see, okay, it's not going to be a side rush. You can then move those Yokais around, gain maximum value. And if Turks that can find them with the Brava drone, that of course could change very quickly. They get stopped by a meat jammer. Nakuli won't even see where the drone is because, well, it can't be checked right now because it's jammed. Just right now, just balancing on the razor's edge for Cyclops. Cyclops still have their timeout available. Yep. Settle things down if they so choose. I will say, this is a very different matchup than what we saw in the Bleed versus CAG game all the way back at the start of yesterday, Nick. And that both of these teams are taking their opponents very seriously. CAG are far more restrained, yep. playing more of that style that helped them topple Talon last night. I like to see the coordination and frankly, I like to see the growth in this team. Yeah, I think growth is the right term because it's definitely signs of improvement and again, just adaptation on the fly here. Something that we don't see very often from CAG. And again, the Yoka is getting good value, spotting out Reeves, stunning him as well. But Hoven on the flying inside the security finds it to Anaton. That's now Echo off the board. Those Yoka can still get intel, they can't shoot any longer. Most of the action in this game has been coming early. It's left very little scrambles the last minute, other than when we saw CAG on their attacks. Bleed starting things off by killing Anaton is obviously not ideal. Those yokais might still be there, but you've taken somebody very critical to your success out of the action. Now Reeps is looking for more, not too far removed from the bomb site. He's at the back of workshop. One player from Cyclops sitting in the bathroom. Oh, oh my. My. nicely tossed nade by Reeps, who's just been getting better the longer this match has gone on. First kill for Cyclops in the round is Arcoli on the Hoven. Chibi Su from above, punishing Mentalist. That's Diffuser down. Now it's Aspie to join in the afterlife. Two kills for Cyclops to send this one away. This is Bleed's map. Arcoli reducing the numbers even more. Reaps has been stellar so far with three kills, but he's gonna have to do all of it in this round. Picks up the Diffuser for good measure. Silhouettes from Cyclops above, 20 seconds left. Reaps will find a safe position by the bathroom door and they will taunt him as they go for the drop. Chibisu is there to give coverage with Black Ray playing the tight angle. And there goes Reaps. And there goes Bleed on Bleed's map. Cyclops, 7-4, will take map one in this best of three. And what a tease that was for Bleed. I mean, they got that early advantage. They were looking good in this final round. But all of a sudden, out of nowhere, 